We've been spending some time with our good friend from Mercy Health, Dr. Dennis Norum, who's giving us, uh, well, some advice, some information, some, uh, some uh, an angle on things that, well, two guys who are uneducated like Joe and I couldn't possibly give you. Dr. Norum, good morning. Good morning, guys. How how's, everything, how's everything going with you this morning? Well, so far, staying healthy. Nice. How's the knee? It's coming along. It still hurts at times. Uh, I've been getting out the strap and stretching it. Um, my wife enjoys watching me do that. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's really that entertaining, you should think pay-per-view. You know, there's always a nice supplement to an income during a lockdown like this. <laughs> Yeah, I could be a, a internet star. I there you guess. go. Hey, what's your take on uh, some different places saying, "All right, we're gonna we're gonna start to reopen some things"? Florida did some beaches, and uh, well, that uh, that proved to be maybe ill advised because they thought people would uh, you know maintain social distancing, just jog, surf, that kind of thing. But instead, no, we're all hanging together playing volleyball. Uh, and then you got other places starting to relax or talking about relaxing some of their restrictions. Well, I think it's probably time that uh, some places can consider doing that, but obviously what you said about Florida kind of backfired. People were congregated in, and uh, I think that gets back to a little bit we talked about last week about what happened or what's happening in Sweden. Sweden's kind of done a social distancing light where they uh, didn't shut down the general population, but they, they did shut down large groups, uh, not allowing them to meet. Uh, nursing homes, things like that, where they kept distancing. And uh, I saw some statistics over the weekend that shows that Sweden has three to four times the death rate their neighboring countries. Uh, it, it's certainly, uh, I think, something you would have expected. So I think it's reasonable in some of the areas of the country to try a few things. Uh, we need to learn how we're going to go through this process. The uh, the Sweden thing you're talking about, Sweden's figures are considerably more than the rest of Scandinavia. Population of over 10 million nearly doubles up those of Denmark, Norway, and Finland individually. Their COVID-19 death toll, 17 times higher than those countries. Yes, and I saw an interview with uh, an official and uh, who I think is with their health care system. And his comment was, well, we haven't overwhelmed our health care system, so I guess we can... We can uh, proceed down this path. So again, it's something that maybe uh, we can learn as we open up our country. Um, go, going back to the Sweden uh, uh, the situation, is, is there a, their death toll is, is higher right now. Is there any positive down the line? Will they create uh, the herd immunity that we hear about uh, quicker, uh, uh, better than other countries? Will, will they be more prepared down the road is what I'm asking, I guess. Well, you bring up a good point about herd immunity, and maybe I can touch on the Stanford study that was released this past week, which was very interesting. Uh, in Santa Clara County, uh, they did an antibody study on about 3,300 people to see who has antibodies to the COVID-19. At the time, they only had about 1,100 confirmed cases out of 1.9 million people, which is a very low percent, six hundredths of a percent uh, of uh, prevalence. And they estimate that probably two and a half to four percent of the population has had COVID-19. So it gives us some uh, help in terms of determining that it's probably much more widely prevalent than we know. And we hope that with the antibody studies, we can check more of the population. However, in terms of herd immunity, that's still a very low percentage. Uh, you probably need to get somewhere in the 50 to 60 to 70 percent range before you're going to see significant herd immunity. So the thought is in Sweden, if they don't keep things locked down, they may be more likely to have that second wave that everybody's concerned about, where it comes back, it's more prevalent and uh, causes more deaths. Yeah, USA Today's got a piece on that, as a matter of fact. Uh, when will a second wave of coronavirus hit, and what will it look like? Uh, one of the things they uh, they offer up, it could crash worse than the first, killing tens of thousands of people who did such a good job of sheltering in place. They uh, remain vigil ground, uh, virgin ground for the virus. Or it could be a mere swell with so many people having been infected without symptoms that levels of immunity are higher than we realized. Yeah, absolutely. We just don't know as... Uh, uh, some of the experts are saying uh, that the virus will tell us 
uh, we will not tell the virus. And I think that's something we have to keep in mind. If, if, if we do re reopen, do a soft reopen, whatever, and we do see the second spike come come back and it's it's comparable to what we have now, do you see another shelter in place? Do you see us doing this whole thing again in a couple months? I think we would be obligated to do that. Um, uh, as we watched what's happened in New York, when you overwhelm or nearly overwhelm the health care system, uh, it, it's something that I don't think as a society we can tolerate that kind of death rate and that inability to take care of people. Um, so I think we have to be prepared. Uh, it would be very helpful, again, if we had better and quicker and faster testing. We're still back to, we're still struggling a little bit on the testing end. Uh, we need more of the rapid testing so we can isolate people quicker and we need the antibody testing more available so we can test certain populations and try to determine who can be out and possibly not have to worry versus who's more susceptible and who isn't immune. What's our, what's our status on the rapid testing right now? Is it, uh, anywhere, is it better than it was last week when we talked? Are we getting anywhere close to what you think is uh, uh, an acceptable number to actually figure out what's going on out here? Well, I think the uh, acute testing, uh, the swabbing, we're still, uh, from the estimates, uh, doing, I, I think I heard 150,000 tests across the country a day. We probably need to do three times that many. Now, the turnaround time is def definitely getting better. Uh, some of the recent turnaround time I've experienced has been just a couple days. But I don't have access yet to the rapid test, like the flu test that we commonly use, where you can get a result within half an hour or within... Uh, a couple hours that would be extremely helpful and, and why and why don't you or, or, or your facility have access to the rapid test just not enough out there yet you, uh, it's not severe enough out here yet what's what's going to be the threshold to get that out here i don't know what the threshold is it just isn't available yet i think the rapid testing was something that came along after the other types of testing i mean there are something like 20 different companies that make uh, COVID-19 testing and they use different forms uh, and the ability to get the rapid test out, which I think the first one that was approved was the uh, uh, Abbott test out of Chicago. And that was just, what, three weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. And to get that test out in across the country uh, has been uh, a bit of a problem. I think they're prioritizing that to certain areas where there's more prevalence with the uh, COVID-19. It's quarter after 7 at News Talk 1440 WRO. Okay, if you're just joining us, we're spending some time with uh, Mercy Health's Dr. Dennis Norm talking a little COVID-19 and all the ancillary things that go along with that one. Uh, did a little shopping uh, over the weekend. My son and I went out and, um, and and did some grocery shopping, and we did our you know little poll as we, uh, we walked around. Mask versus no mask. And we had it figured about a 70-30 no mask policy going on at the grocery store. But the one thing that jumped out at me a lot is the incorrect wearing of masks. I saw people with the nose cut, the uh, hole cut out for their nose to go through. I saw people with it hanging below their nose. I saw people with it hanging below their chin. I saw people who basically took a scarf that they'd had in the car from winter and wrapped it around their head a couple of times. Then I saw the M95 masks. Um, what's your take? If, if you're going out to the grocery store, what do you do? Well, I have a couple of uh, masks from my office. Obviously, I have an advantage because I need to use those in the office, so I take those with me, and I uh, put on a regular uh, mask. It's not an N95, but it is a regular mask. I guess my only comment is something's better than nothing, but you sometimes wonder. And as we've talked about masks, uh, they need to have a certain thickness, and they need to be over your nose. And even with a mask on, one hopes that people... Uh, uh, cover their face with their elbow when they sneeze or need to sneeze. And uh, hopefully that will reduce some of the transmission. Uh, the other part of that is even with the mask, you know, the hygiene is still extremely important. Uh, even with your mask, touching, you know, you're out in the public, you're touching a lot of different surfaces. And we've talked about before the persistence of the virus on surfaces uh, is uh, probably as big an issue as the mask. 
So, so would you uh, you recommend all you, all of your uh, patients to mask up to go to the grocery store? Yes, absolutely, uh, absolutely. And it, again, whatever you can improvise is better than not having any mask. But but be sure to cover your nose and your mouth. And uh, if you do have to sneeze, try to stick your face in your elbow and make sure you don't blast everything out. I, I, I felt badly for a, a couple that we were nearby, when I say nearby, 30 feet away from, um, the, the, they were shopping and she had a bottle of water and went to have a drink of, uh, of the water, and like we've all done it one time or another, and it went run, went down the wrong pipe. And, oh. and so she begins coughing and spewing, and she's doing what she can to get her face into her elbow and all that, and her husband is looking around like, please, oh God, they're, <laughs> they're going to form a mob, they're going to come after us. Well, I happen to see what, what happened here, that it went down the wrong pipe, but other people who were nearby, it was, it was as though someone was projectile vomiting. I mean, the, the way those carts bailed out of that area in produce to get away from this woman was, uh, well, it, it was amusing because no one got run over. Yeah, I, I could imagine, and and I'm sure people are very sensitive to that uh, uh, when somebody coughs or sneezes near them. Uh, uh, so uh, I, I I think that would have been a a, a good YouTube video. Oh, it, it was, it was, and then the guy who was a uh, guy who was nearby us walked by and looked over at us. He goes, you know, it's come to the point now. You're better off breaking wind as loudly as possible than coughing. Yes. As far as I know, you cannot pass the COVID virus that way. <laughs> I'm for you guys. Um, you, you mentioned something better than nothing. Uh, Riley said he saw somebody with a scarf uh, around their face. Is a scarf, is, is a, you know, or just a, the T-shirt you have in, in the back of your car if you've forgotten a mask, if you don't have a mask. Is that beneficial or, or are you wasting time without anything, you know, Above and beyond. No, I think any anything beneficial, as we may have mentioned in the past, at least it keeps you from touching your face, uh, you know, covering your nose so you don't rub your nose or inadvertently uh, pass some of the germs into that area. You know, if you don't have a mask, if you have a T-shirt, double it up a couple of times and wrap it around your face, I, I think that's fine. A cotton T-shirt, a couple layers of that will work quite well. It may look a little goofy, but it will do the job if you... Um, get your mouth and your nose covered. So when, when my grandma yelled at me for not wearing a mask at the grocery store the other day, you, you side with my grandmother. Absolutely. Okay. Your grandmother knows best. All right. Well, yeah, look, look how many years she's piled up. So she's doing right. something right here. Right. Dr. Norm, before we let you go, um, I, we're, we're reading all sorts of different things about a vaccine. Uh, you know, 12 to 18 months, 20 months. Uh, Johnson & Johnson says they'll have 600 to 800 million coronavirus vaccines but not until early 2021. Uh, those numbers sound about right, or is there a chance that somebody will come up with something that gets through sooner than that? I suspect it's going to take that long because testing the vaccines, you have to test safety. Uh, you have to do studies to show that they're safe. The last thing you want to do is put an unsafe, ineffective vaccine out in the market, and it's probably going to take that minimum of 12 months uh, so I think those numbers uh, sound correct. Okay. Um, as far as us, us around here, you've seen, uh, you've been tracking the numbers, seeing where they're going. Are are we going the right way? And you, do you see a, a, a soft opening, a little um, uh, re lighten the restrictions of our shelter in place in the next two weeks? I'm not sure. I think the general concept is that we need to see the curve flattening and going the other way. And which is looking at Illinois' curve, I don't think we're quite there yet. Uh, the thought being, once you see that curve go the flattening like New York has, you can talk about a two-week interval, and you could probably start to open up things a little bit. So uh, having you... said that, though, that certainly people are getting restless. I mean, there's a big push now uh, all over the country, obviously, to try to get some things open. So if you if you were a betting man, uh, I'm not going to get my hair cut before uh, before the first, right? Uh, no, you're going to be a okay. long hair for Thanks. a few more weeks. All right. <laughs> <laughs> we're already there. See, Doctor Norm, not a problem you and I suffer from. <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> no, not a problem. <laughs> well, Dr. Norm, as always, we, we appreciate you taking time out of your day. We, we, we appreciate the expertise. If you're willing, as long as this, uh, this crisis goes on, we, we would love to have you come back next Monday with, uh, with the latest things that you found and different questions we may have for you. 
Absolutely, guys. I'll see you next week.